I opened the first full-blown restaurant I had in 1989, which is when I went full-time self-employed. Uh, my timing was perfect because the recession was about to start. Uh, so I had three years of living off an overdraft and no money. Uh, but my real break came in 1992 uh, when Pizza Express came up for sale, a business I've been tracking for about two years. Um, and together with partners, we bought control of that business. It was a brilliant formula. Um, at the time, it had 12 restaurants. And over the 90s, when I was involved, I was chairman, we took it to the best part of 200 restaurants. Uh, what was interesting was um, we had three rivals. We were number four, and there were four main chains. There was Pizza Hut, Pizza Land, and Deep Pan Pizza. And uh, we had a better formula. And um, it wasn't ours. It was a man who created it in 1965 called Peter Boiso, who's a genius. Um, and uh, two of the three market leaders in the next 10 years uh, shut down Pizza Land and Deep Pan Pizza. And Pizza Express has been the market leader ever since and deserves to be, and I think there are now about 380 restaurants or something like that. Um, subsequently, I took control of a business called My Kind of Town, which is started by another difficult but brilliant food entrepreneur called Bob Payton, which owned restaurants and bars called things like Chicago Pizza Pie Factory, Salsa, Beach Blanket, Babylon, Henry J. Beans, and so forth and so on. Uh, during the period I was involved with that, we doubled its size, had restaurants all over the shop, Paris, Spain, Germany, etc. Uh, we sold it, surprisingly, to uh, Capital Radio, who thought radio and restaurants made sense, but <laughs> unfortunately for them, it didn't. Um, I then got involved in the fine dining industry, and I bought the Ivy and Le Caprice, um, and we then relaunched Jay Shiki, and we bought some other restaurants like The Collection and Bamboo, uh, and we had a Belgian chain called uh, Belga, uh, and we were arrogant and foolish enough to think we could launch Belgo in New York. We took it there, and it was a uh, catastrophe. Uh, we lost $5 million. Uh, we used non-union labor to open our restaurant in Manhattan, and so they picketed our launch and erected a 20-foot inflatable rat outside the door on the <laughs> opening party, uh, and that was uh, not successful. Um, <laughs> however, we uh, were lucky enough to have come up with the idea of doing wood-fired pizza as a sort of follow-on from my experience with Pizza Express. A lot, of, a lot of money to be made in pizza. And I felt that the market was ready for something better. So with partners, we launched Strata. Again, we were rather fortuitous in that um, we, uh, the first one we launched in um, Battersea Rise didn't work. And I think if we'd just done that, we would have given up. But we'd already signed another lease, so we were committed. So we had to look, open the second one, too. And thank God that was successful. And uh, that then went well. And um, we took it to about 40-odd and then sold it to someone else who's um, been busily messing it up ever since. Um, <clears throat> uh, during that period, I also uh, was a co-founder of some pub businesses, Wellington pubs and punch taverns. Um, I also then invested in and became the chairman of Giraffe um, nine years ago. It had five <coughs> branches, good management, great family dining. Um, we've taken that over the last nine years to 50 restaurants, and um, Tesco came knocking a few months ago, and uh, we couldn't resist the siren call, so we sold it, sadly. Uh, but it's a great journey, and I, I hope they're successful with it. Um, Six or seven years ago, uh, I, I took control of Pati Patisserie Valerie, which has been around since 1926, uh, classic formula. Um, I felt there was a lot of potential in it, even though at the time it wasn't really making any profit. Um, as of yesterday, when we opened another branch in Leeds, we have 108 branches now. Uh, it includes another upmarket business called Baker and Spice, which is in London, which I bought out of bankruptcy. Um, and uh, that's probably been financially the most successful thing I've ever done. Uh, I've also, over the years, bought uh, a home delivery sushi business called Feng Sushi, uh, a London bar business called Rocket, a Midlands and North-based uh, Mediterranean brasserie chain called Ego. Uh, I chair uh, and a part owner of a um, craft beer pub business called Draft House, and. Um, a week ago, I became half owner of a chain of cocktail bars called Grand Union. Um, 
I also invested in a roller coaster ride of the, the largest independent fresh fish cell food shell, shellfish distributor to the catering trade called Seafood Holdings, <coughs> uh, which we sold to um, 665. Um, and I also recently got involved with a retro confectionery brand called Hope and Greenwood. Um, I got very keen on artisan baking, a bit like chocolate and coffee and various other sorts of food. I took the view of you a few years ago that bread, you know, 95% of the bread sold is not very nice and that you look in a place like France, 60% of the bread is artisan and I felt that we might be rediscovering the quality of artisan bread. So I backed a small artisan baker called Flower Power City initially, a bit of a struggle to begin with, but things have got much better. Uh, and then on the back of that, I met the guys who run um, Bread Factory in Gales, and uh, we, we took a majority of that business. I became chairman of that two years ago. Uh, since then, we've doubled, uh, almost, actually almost trebled the size of that business. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, with this summer, we will open our 14th Gales, but most of it is actually a wholesale bakery business. It's easily the largest RCM baker in the country, uh, and it supplies uh, thousands or certainly many, many hundreds of hotels, pubs, restaurants, and so forth. Um, I've also got involved in contract catering in the last year. I bought a business called Genuine Dining. So I've had, over the last 20-odd years, uh, experience in um, casual dining, bars, nightclubs, fine dining, home delivery, cafes, bakeries, and contract catering, and some food manufacturing and distribution. And I think the reason why I like the food business is, as you've heard, because we all love food, because uh, many food markets uh, are growth markets. I think customers are getting fussier and more aspirational. This creates opportunities. I think it is constantly innovating, and the rewards for that innovation, if you're a provider, uh, brand power matters, so if you're good at brands, as some of our other guests have heard, that can uh, uh, be uh, profitable. Um, generally, food can offer high gross margins. Um, I think you have to be aware very much of the power of the supermarkets. As you've heard, you've got to be niche, not mass. I think focus on authenticity, quality. Uh, I think it's a highly entrepreneurial industry. I think there are a number of, you know, giant multinationals and what have you, uh, but you can defeat them if you are nifty enough. Um, so I think you and we enjoy the food and drink business because we love the product, because for a living we give customers pleasure. Uh, there is variety and endless opportunity. Uh, it doesn't take academic qualifications, but common sense. Um, and I think what matters really in all these sorts of businesses is having vital engagement. Uh, and a real interest in what one does and pride in your product. Thank you very much.